What up, people? Leo here from Creative Tech Lab, and we're back today to talk about something from the roots of this channel, the RX100 Mark 7. Today, we're going to talk about how to shoot a cinematic sequence using this little point and shoot camera in a seemingly just boring, regular type environment. So, let's get into it. So for those of you that have been following me, you guys know that I love this little camera. It's what actually got me started here on YouTube. For those of you that are watching this channel for the first time, welcome. Nice to have you here. Nice to meet you. If this is your first time here, this is Creative Tech Lab where we talk about all things creative, make content to help people make better videos, better music, better everything. So if you're into any kind of creative thing, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button. I would greatly appreciate it. And I'll try not to let you down. But this little thing here is awesome. It fits into your pocket. It's a great travel camera. And especially now, since they've added a microphone jack, it's an awesome vlog camera. However, with all the pro grade features that they pack into this thing, you could do some serious cinematic damage with all the features that you have at hand. So that is what we're going to create today and just run through a quick sequence here. And we're gonna do the entire thing all handheld, no gimbal, no straps or any of that stuff. All right, so let's talk a little bit about settings here. We are gonna be shooting in 120 frames per second because that's what you can shoot in in full 1080p on the RX100 Mark 7, which means our shutter speed is gonna be set at one over 250 there in order to get the correct cinematic motion blur. We're also gonna set um, the picture profile to PP10, which is HLG2, which is my favorite picture profile there. It gives you a nice flat-ish image, still gets the colors right. And then lastly, we're gonna have the ND filter on there so that we can adjust our exposure on the fly and we could keep the shutter speed exactly where we need it without having to change it and have the aperture wide open as wide as possible there, which you know ranges from 2.8 on the wide end and it goes all the way up to 4.5 on the longer end of the zoom there. All right, and then as far as the different shots that we have there, we have an equivalent focal range of 24 millimeters all the way up to 200. Yes, 200. Yes, it's kind of crazy and people just kind of breeze over that too many times. However, that gives you a lot of different flexibility in the type of shots that you kind of get. So the storyline that we're just going here was just a girl in the park, exploring the park with her camera, kind of sightseeing, kind of touristy, whatever it is that you take from it. But we just wanted to get a, a variation of different shots. So we did a couple of things over and over again. This bridge that um, we were on gave some nice leading lines and had the lines going down and then kind of frames up our subject really well. So we did a few follow shots a couple of times just to get her walking so followed from behind followed from in front and then the same thing for the feet and then got um, pictures um got a side follow shot close up of the camera that way you're able to put all of those together and then a few shots of her using the actual camera couple nature shots use that zoom to really zoom in on the waterfall and the ducks there because they were pretty far away did a couple of nature shots, the trees and such, and then that was it. So, I mean, realistically, you just need to kind of be creative, try different things, try a couple of different shots, try different focal lengths or whatever. And then if you get enough shots, you have something to pull together in post. So let's roll it.
All right, so that was the cinematic sequence there. Hopefully you liked it, hopefully you liked the edit, but more importantly, hopefully it gave you an idea on what you could do with whatever camera you have, especially even if it's just a small point and shoot camera like this little pocket alpha right here, as I like to call it. Um, and if you like this video, please go ahead, drop it a like if the video helped you in any way, shape or form. Please go ahead, drop it a like. If you think it might help somebody else, please go ahead and share it out with them. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the notification button. I have a ton of other content around the RX100, so if that's what you're into, A6400, a lot more stuff coming on that, and a ton, 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 ton more other reviews, tutorials, cinematic stuff coming, so. I would greatly appreciate that, as I said before, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.